guys, my name is Christina. If you're new to my channel, I'm a second year medical student who studies at Newcastle University. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk all about how I study for my exams. So in a recent video, I opened my end of second year exam results. So yeah, I finished second year, so I wanted to make a video about how I studied for my exams. Um, so I'm gonna talk you through what I do before a lecture, so pre-reading, and then how I take notes in that lecture, what I do afterwards, how I make my flashcards, how I study my flashcards, um, and just literally everything all the way up until the exam. Um, so I hope this is really helpful for you guys and yeah, I really hope you enjoy. So just before I get into anything, I thought people might be wondering what laptop I use. I use the Microsoft Surface Pro, the sixth one. Um, I got it just before I started med school. It just looks like this. It's a tablet and a laptop. So essentially what, what this does is, so it has like a keyboard, but yeah, it kind of like comes off. So if you wanted to, you could just use like the pen on the side and like write on it. I did that a lot in first year, although I stopped doing that um, for second year. I didn't do that as much anymore just because handwriting takes a long time. I remember watching like a bunch of videos about like iPad versus laptop, like before coming to medical school. And I'm very glad that I got like something that has the option of being just an iPad, even though this is an iPad, um, because I think it's nice to have the combination of like the pen and the keyboard. So yeah, I don't know, if that's in the back of your mind, you're not sure what to get, I would recommend getting something that's not 100% a laptop. Okay, so let's start off with pre-reading. What that is, why it's important and why I do it. So pre-reading is as it sounds like before a lecture, you'll do some pre-reading on what the lecture's about and you'll kind of, I take notes or make flashcards before the lecture. Normally the lecture slides are uploaded before the lecture actually happens. So you can kind of flick through them if you want to. And um, pretty much what I'll do is I'll go through the lecture slides make flashcards on pretty much everything there. I'll make sure to use the learning outcomes as like the key things I want to focus on and the learning outcomes are what you're gonna be assessed on. So I'll make flashcards on pretty much everything in the lecture so that in the lecture I don't have to do them if that makes sense. Because normally what people will do is they'll make notes while the lecture's happening or make their flashcards then. But I think you save time if you do it beforehand. Um, and during that time, I'll try and like understand what's gonna, what's gonna be spoken about as well. Like try and get an idea of what's gonna be talked about so that I'm not like confused in the lecture if that makes sense i think you save a lot of time pre-reading versus like doing it in the lecture sometimes there'll be like gaps in my knowledge like i won't have all of my questions answered leading up to the lecture so i'll try and like watch some youtube videos about that topic or like google things or like just look at websites that might have like information that might be relevant and stuff so i try and be quite like proactive with my learning i won't go to the lecture expecting them to teach me everything um and it happens a lot where like the lecturers will they'll like teach you things and you know they'll be you know teaching you but there's always always something in the exam that they haven't taught you anyway so i think it's really important to do like your own research as well like google things have a look online like they're not going to tell you everything you need to know for the exam you do need to do a little bit of research yourself but yeah that's that's something you guys don't need to worry about until you get to medical school <laughs> Okay, moving on to flashcards, so that's pre-reading. And um, I should probably just say that I actually don't take notes. I do make flashcards. I know lots of people use Notion or they use like just a Word document. I don't do that just because whenever I'm in first year, when I made notes, I never even looked at them. They were kind of a waste of time for me personally. Moving on to making the flashcards, I just use Anki. I also use Quizlet as well. Anki is the main one where most of my flashcards are. But um, when it comes to anatomy, like different body parts and muscles and stuff like that, I'll use Quizlet. Quizlet has so many flashcard decks that have already been made. You don't even have to worry about making them yourself. You can save so much time because making the flashcards does take quite a while. So for things that are time consuming, I'll probably just use Quizlet. And then um, for things that are a bit more specific and that I can't find elsewhere, I'll use Anki. With um, flashcards, some people say that you should have like all of your flashcards in like one big exam deck so like imagine you've got a multiple choice exam for the end of your year coming up you should have all of those flashcards in one place i'm not 100 keen on that because i think having one flashcard deck where you've got like thousands of flashcards that's a bit intimidating i split mine up i'll, I'll talk about how i organize my revision at the end of the video but what i do is we have case-based learning at newcastle so all of my folders lecture notes well my lecture slides and my flashcards they're organized in cases so it'll be like case 20 case 21 case 22 and i just study them that way so i think it's good to have them separated in that way whereas it's all in one massive like exam folder i think so it's a bit overwhelming so approaching exams i do have three key things that i really like to focus on and make sure that i'm like doing like almost every day if not every day and that is spatial repetition um, mindfulness and then practice questions. 
So if you've ever come across Ali Abdal and his studying for exams videos, or if you've watched his Skillshare class, um, you'll know that he bangs on about spatial repetition. And I understand why, to be honest, because when I really started to do my Anki decks properly, I really felt the difference and I really felt like, okay, I know this topic now. Like what I would say for, um, if you're not a huge flashcard person, you don't have to do flashcards, you just need to figure out a way to incorporate spatial repetition in your studying. So like, even if it's just making a mind map and just revisiting that every week or so, you just need to have spatial repetition. It doesn't have to be flashcards. It could be literally anything. I know some people use Notion and they have like um, a special formula in their Notion folder where like Notion will show them at a, like a spaced interval certain things that they need to study. And so if that works for you, you could do that as well. Cause I know not everyone likes flashcards, especially Anki, cause Anki isn't the most aesthetic pleasing place to do flashcards but Quizlet is a lot prettier in my opinion. So mindfulness is super important for me in the lead up to exam. I don't get stressed, I do get anxious and like nervous for things. Like I'm one of those people that I will, like I'll look perfectly fine internally like <laughs> I am freaking out about the exam or I'm downplaying it massively, like I'm acting like I'm okay, but I'm really not. So mindfulness is super important to me. I know it's like a, it's not a really serious revision technique, but I think it's super important if you do get anxious or have anxiety or just get stressed about things, like I would highly recommend that. And then the last thing which is super important for me is practice questions. So at Newcastle, unfortunately, we don't actually get past papers, but you could go into the exam not having done like a proper mock. We do have practice questions that the uni gives us like at the end of each case um, to practice with. I think we only get like 20 to 30, so it's not loads, but it is something. I don't think that they're enough. I think definitely um, in my own time, I always try and look online to find more practice questions. I've had a couple people message me asking me like where I find my practice questions, especially in first year, because there's a couple of people who watch my channel who are in first year at Newcastle. So um, I think I might make like a Notion page that I can share and that has all the practice questions that I used in first year and then all the ones I used for a second year. I'll figure out how to do that and like where I should link it, probably in this video, but yeah, I'll do that at some point as well because I know people want to know where to get practice questions. I think what I was doing for these exams I just did was I was doing like, I'm gonna say four hours of flashcards in the morning. I'd wake up at five, do four hours of flashcards and I'd finish like 12 because I'd take breaks finish at like 12 and then have lunch in the afternoon I would practice for my OSCEs which is like a practical exam and then I would do my practice questions for the written exams so yeah literally just all day studying and revising <laughs> why I don't take notes so I don't take notes I think I mentioned earlier because it's very time consuming and I don't get much out of it whenever I have taken notes it helps me kind of at, at the time like understand things but I, I don't remember it long term what helps me to remember things really really long term what massively helped with like learning all these little random facts and all these little bits of information that are just so difficult to understand is like just doing flashcards again and again and again every single day the best thing that i can say is like even if you're not even doing medicine like anything in your first few weeks of like deciding how you're gonna revise try so many different things like try flashcards try the mind maps try I don't, I don't, I don't know what other techniques are. Try, try like the notion space repetition thing. Try everything and then figure out what works for you. I also wanted to talk about how I organize my revisions. So I do organize everything into cases. It depends on you and your university and how you know you're taught things. I would say organize things into categories. I remember at the very start of first year, I kind of made an Anki deck on each lecture, which is just way too small. Like you, you'd only have like 20 or 30 flashcards in there. So it makes sense to have like a bigger thing. Um, yeah, if you do cases, do that. If you maybe do like organ systems, you could have like the heart, the lungs, you know, etc. You could have all your revision like organized into terms if you wanted to, um, just whichever makes sense for you. Don't make them too small, like each lecture, but definitely don't I, don't, I don't think making them too big is a good idea, but a lot of people do that. And when it actually comes to making flashcards, literally all I do is like, I'll write out a really, really simple, short sentence. Like what are the four types of stroke? And really simple, I would just list them. And then in a separate flashcard, cause I don't think you should like put too much information all in one. So if you've got four things, try not to have like four paragraphs try and just list the four and then make four separate flashcards on like each thing if that makes sense so you don't want too much on one place but then yeah I'll, I'll like i'll put examples on screen like sometimes with my flashcards i can't help it but like i need to have lots of information all in one because it's like a really long complex thing that i need to know so i can't help it but i can yeah I, yeah i don't know i don't really know how you learn those without flashcards to be honest so yeah that is it guys how i study for my exams there honestly isn't much to it like 
pre-read for my lectures, do my flashcards and keep my mindset in the right place. Like, other than that, there's not much going on. I really hope you enjoyed watching and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Anyway, yeah. I was going to say thanks for watching again. Um, bye. <laughs>